All right, so we are here. It is uh, Tim Francis from Great Assistant with Dr. Tom from Origins of Health. And we're gonna talk about creating a weekly uh, agenda for our team to follow. This weekly team agenda, I would say it has origins in a few different methodologies. I tip my cap to, um, there's a, 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 a loose connection to like EOS or traction. If anybody's ever seen that before, many people have, I would say we've taken the best of that, the best of our own practices, the best actually from, uh, there, there's a piece of scrum that's in there as well, the project management system. So it's kind of cobbling together what's worked for us. As always, I always say what I, whatever I teach is the first word, not the last word. So feel free to customize to your purposes. Okay, so um, the first uh, what what you would need to replicate this system, first of all, would be some place that you store documents. We recommend Google Drive and Google Docs. It's just such an elegant, easy, multi-user platform to use. Um, also, it's extra uh, potent if you have company core values, which you'll see in just a moment. And, you know, Dr. Tom and I have already worked through his company core values. So he's in a great spot. He's got that already. Um, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you the full powered version of what we do. And uh, it might be a lot to deploy all at once. So I encourage uh, you, Dr. Tom, or anyone watching this, you know, go piece by piece. We don't want to create indigestion for ourselves or our teams. You know, we can go piece by piece. Dr. Tom, at some point, you can tell me where you think you are and I can make some recommendations on like, what's the small, medium and large version of this, okay? So fully deployed, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like uh, fully deployed. So sharing screen here in three, two, and one. And this actually is from my own company, greatassistant.com. This is, this is the real thing. This is not a dummy version. So we start with a Google Doc that actually has every single day of all of our team meetings. Our team meetings are on Tuesdays. So you'll see these are all Tuesdays and it's every quarter, Q1, 2, 3, 4 for 2024. And you'll see that we have links to all the documents for every team meeting, you know, going back years now, okay? So if I click on any one of these, I will see the unique Google document for that specific day, Jan the 2nd. And I think this is very important that you're not uh, simply taking the same document and just editing it over and over and over week to week to week. No, no, no. I want a separate Google doc for every single team meeting, uh, every single weekly team meeting. And then from there, once that gets created, then it gets linked to this master sheet. So all that happens each week is my executive assistant. Her name is Denise. She will go into the last team meeting right here. She'll go file, make a copy, and then she'll change the name to the next Tuesday. She'll make that copy and then she'll go and edit this so that it's the parts that are to be edited each week get taken out and uh, is ready now. It's a fresh document for our teammates to come in and populate. Which brings me to another point. And that point is that, um, uh, that point is that there are certain parts that yes, the my executive assistant shall update but there's actually some other sections that each individual team member is responsible to fill in themselves. So for example, for example, every week, each team member is encouraged to share one moment of appreciation where they saw another teammate really living the core values, which I'll show you that in just a moment. And instead of them all, instead of my teammates, like all DMing the EA to say, hey, put this in the doc for me. No, 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 no. We have teammates going into the meeting document themselves and populating. What I like about that is it creates an interaction between the teammate and the document. And so it reduces the friction that they feel in their head about what is this document? Where is it located? What's it called? How do I find it? And it really brings the document to life, which I think is really, really powerful. Okay. So now what does an an individual document look like? What does the, the agenda look like week to week? Okay, so this is going to be my team's real document for our next meeting, which as we can see from the title here is Fe February 27th, 2024. The time of this recording, Dr. Tom and I are here on a call. It's February the 22nd. So in five days from now, we will be literally using this document. So you're going to see a lot of empty spots because it hasn't been populated by the team yet. Um, at LAT US, there are really kind of like 
let's say uh, three or four main sections. So on ramp, we call it on ramp. Um, I think Gino called Wickman from track and called like good news or something. But that's the first section It's very brief. It's just five minutes. Then we have reporting is our next big section. The next big section is going to be ID, uh, discussion. Uh, Gino calls it IDS, we call it discussion. And then the last is conclusion. So that's four main sections. And if you look at the summary in the left sidebar here, you'll see here they are. On-ramp, reporting, discussion, conclusion. Okay, so those are the four big sections. Now, I really tip my cap to, to Gino because he did a great job of saying in this first section called reporting, we don't want to discuss. This whole section, the, the purpose of it is literally just to smoke out the issues that might be in the business. The danger of us discussing any given item at this stage is we're going to go down a rabbit hole. And we might end up talking about something that had we known better, we would have found out is like the 17th most important thing in the, in the business this week. So we need to smoke the issues out first. That's why we go through reporting, all the different parts of reporting. Along the way, if there's issues that come up, then we put them into our discussion list right here. And so, yes, it means you might scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down. Now, to make all that easier, there's one person on the team each week who's dedicated to being what's called the scribe. And so the scribe is the person who notates and, and does the in-meeting writing of the document. So let's say we get into the, the dashboard for the team and like, oh, we're behind on sales or, oh, you know, we're ahead on paying off debt or something like that. If, if anything about any of these items during reporting generates a possible discussion item, it's going to be, in this case, Maria, the scribe, who's going to go to the bottom and in the discussion area is going to add the item. We are behind on sales. Got it. So it's not everybody trying to scroll through the whole document. It's just one person who's focused on being the keeper of, not the keeper, but the, the typist, let's say, through the meeting. Now, we also have one person who's the leader of every single meeting. And that leader is the one who's going to say, hey, welcome, everybody. Um, we'd love to hear some good news. And the leader always goes first. And then we always go just to the right on our little table of teammates at the top here. OK, so Jen, who's leading this meeting, she would say her good news, then Maria, then Lady Denise, then Billy, Kyle, Tim. And now we move on to the next section. Personally, I don't feel like I learn a lot about my teammates, especially because we're an all remote team. I don't learn a lot about them if they talk to me about the weather. So a rule that I actually have for our on ramp or our good news is no talking about the weather. I, I want to hear about your kids. I want to hear about the, the state fair you went to. I want to hear about the cool book you read, the amazing Netflix you know, movie you discovered. I want to know about you, not the weather. Okay. So that's on ramp. Typically five minutes. It's like a sentence or two from each team member, if that. Okay. Now, before I keep going, let me describe just a little bit up here. So for the meeting on Feb 27, this is who's leading and scribing. In the next meeting, everything shifts down one position. So the next meeting, it's actually going to be Maria leading and Denise scribing. Then the next meeting is going to be Denise leading and Billy scribing. Then the next meeting is going to be Billy and Kyle, right? And so when my assistant duplicates this document, all she's doing is change. One of the things she's doing is she's changing the date. And then she's also moving this one position down, one position down, one position down. So yes, that means that even though I'm the CEO, founder, owner of greatassistant.com, I only lead one out of every six meetings. I love rotating the leader because it gets everyone the opportunity to engage, to understand like it's a forcing function that forces a person to interact with the format so they get to understand it far better, far more quickly. It also creates the opportunity for leadership for everybody down the road. I hope my business does grow and I hope some of these team members do graduate up into more leadership roles. And so if they've had the opportunity to, to, to lead here, they're going to know how to lead a, a sub department meeting or a committee or something like that down the road. Okay. So that's how we handle that. Okay. So we've completed on ramping. That's about five minutes. We're now getting to reporting. This section is about 15 minutes, about 15 minutes. 
So uh, again, this is the pro level. We've been developing this for years. And so if this looks overwhelming, just pick the parts that you feel you can digest in the next week or two. And then maybe each week you add one more feature or something like that, okay? So uh, when we start reporting, uh, we go to our dashboard first. So if I were to click that, it would take me out to an Excel spreadsheet that has our company KPIs every single week. I've made the choice. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but for me, I've made the choice to run my business almost entirely open book. Team members don't see each other's salaries or forms of compensation, but everybody on the team does see how much revenue we've got, does see how much debt we've got, does see how many clients we've got, et cetera, et cetera. That is a whole other conversation for another day. Um, that is a strategic choice that I've made. And so, yes, on my dashboard, it literally says revenue. It literally says debt. It literally says free cash. It has financial information included. Okay. Now, remember, if we see something on there like, oh, we had very a very low close rate this week, or, hey, our debt's not being paid off as quickly as we thought it would, not the time to discuss it. We're just going to say, okay, that should be a discussion point. And then that gets added by our scribe to the discussion area towards the bottom, okay? So we go through the dashboard, different team members own different numbers. And so everyone gets a chance to, not everyone, but almost everyone gets a chance to speak and say, here's where we are with my metrics. Once we finish that, we come back to this document. Now I own a hiring company where we are constantly hiring multiple different assistants from multiple different entrepreneurs. And so implicit to that is we have to keep track of all of our clients and where they are in our program, where they are in the hiring process to see where we may need to swoop in and accelerate things uh, or where things are on track. So that's where these next two items are. And so we have about a two to three week, you know, lag time between when we bring someone into the program to when they get an assistant. And we're watching this very closely because if our production team and Maria is our team lead is swamped and has too many clients, and she's going to increase this number to four or five. And that tells me as the salesperson that I, I can't promise that we can hire an assistant within two weeks. So it's really important feedback that production can feed information back to sales. So sales can make promises that production can keep. Okay. Um, again, because we're managing multiple clients, multiple hiring processes at any given time, this is a Google sheet that has all of our clients and where they are in the, in the program. Okay. Now we have a couple, this is kind of like uh, like filing cabinet kind of items right here. Here's our quarterly plan. Here's our schedule, et cetera, et cetera. We keep those because we just find ourselves referring to them around this point from time to time, specifically because we now get to the next section. So quarterly rocks. Okay, so these are the rocks. You can call them rocks. You can call them priorities, whatever you want to call them. And um, in my opinion, there's really five areas that, that we want to be watching uh, quarter in and quarter out. Okay, they are acquisition, fulfillment, mothership. And so those are the three engine rooms of any business. Acquisition is like marketing and sales. Fulfillment is typically like ops or production. And then mothership is like finance, legal, HR. Okay, so those are the first three. And then there's two other areas for us to think about at all times. And that's actually people and systems. And I'm getting balloons now on my little screen. That's that's hilarious. It happens at the most convenient times, Dr. Tom. So uh, so these are the five areas where we actually do strategic planning. And I'll see if I can quickly pull this up for you because I want to show you how it all fits together. So strategic planning, we do every quarter. And um, every quarter, we're looking at our, um, our five areas. And what's very, very interesting, very interesting, is oftentimes if we want to if we want to improve or build something in acquisition, fulfillment, or mothership, typically what that means is simultaneously, we're also going to have to improve something in people and systems. So this is what we go through every single quarter where we have a big five-year goal at the top. We have an end of year. So 2020, uh, this is a template. So end of year 2026, that's where we're going to end up. You know, this is obviously not five years from now. This is just an example. So update the date so it fits you. And end of year, what that means is if we're going to be here at 26 is we have to be here at end of 26, 25, 24. And if those are the goals, then what has to happen quarter by quarter? 
in 2024. So Q2, Q3, Q4, and then 2025 Q, uh, Q1. And here's our five areas, acquisition, fulfillment, mothership. Again, I told you those are the three main engine rooms. And then typically, if something's going to improve in these three engine rooms, we also have to fix something in people and systems. So for example, if I am going to say, hey, we've got some legal exposure here. We need to create a new terms of service for all of our new clients. That would be a mothership. And that might be a, a, a little sticky note of something I want to accomplish in the quarter. Well, then if I'm going to create a new terms of service, then I'm also going to have to come over to systems and I'm going to have to figure out like, are we putting that into sign now or DocuSign? And where in the sales process do we bring this up, right? And so there's going to be an impact there. Likewise, let's say that I want to start a podcast. Okay, great. I'm going to write a, po um, a you know launch podcast. So I'm going to need a system for getting guests. I'm going to need a system for publishing episodes, right? So there's almost like a double entry type vibe going on. And then it's all of these little post-it notes across the quarter that end up becoming our, uh, our uh, rocks or priorities for the quarter. And so we're simply saying, uh, so each, each rock uh, has an owner. So in this case, we've got the item, we've got the owner, which is TF, that's me, Tim Francis. And then this is the status. Is it on, on track, at risk, off track, complete, or abandoned? Sometimes we just have to abandon something. It's like, we're not going to make it this quarter. We're going to focus our efforts on fewer priorities. It's also helpful to always know what's the next action on any of the rocks so that there's no question um, in terms of like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, mental exercise to kind of like break the ice and what has to happen next. Okay. So every week teammates are responsible to update. If they have metrics in the dashboard, they have to go update their own metrics in the dashboard. The only exception is me because it's my executive assistant who inputs my data into the dashboard. And then uh, each team member also has to put uh, update their own um, rocks and you know sub rocks like 1.1, 1.2, their next action, their status, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so when we reach this point of the meeting, I'm saying you know uh, 1.1 on track, 1.2 at risk, right? If it's at risk, maybe we should make it a discussion item. Maybe then Kyle will speak up and say 1.3 is complete, 1.4 on track. And we're just going between team members. We're all saying what the status is of our commitments within the five areas. Okay, next up is headlines. And this is where, again, individual team members are going to put their own headlines. Not every teammate's gonna have a headline every single week. Um, it's kind of like updates about both clients and team members. So uh, Maria here is saying, hey, I got to go do my Colby uh, continuing education credits. FYI, this is something I'm going to be doing the next week. For me, it might be like, hey, I've started writing a book or hey, good news. The book is now off to the editor or something like that. So sometimes just kind of like FYI, it might also be like a client update. So again, we help entrepreneurs to get an executive assistant. So in that case, it might be like, oh, you know, Dr. Tom and Dr. Jill, we got them an assistant. Everyone celebrates, we, you know, high five virtually and off we go. Okay, so again, not the time for discussion. We're just reporting. Okay, next up is our core value moments. Um, in here, these are our four core values, a real abbreviated version. So be accountable and transparent is our first, first core value. Show people you care, pursue mastery and growth, and then ensure four-way workability. Those are our four core values at Great Assistant uh, LLC. And so each team member is encouraged to put in one core value moment every single week. Now I'm not there. There's no TF and that's because I wasn't in this meeting. <laughs> I ended up missing this meeting because I was, uh, I I'd committed to spending some time writing my book. Okay. So um, now I actually have taught my team members how to uh, present their core values and it's in this specific format. So MK is, is Maria. So she would say, I'd like to give core value four ensure four-way workability to Denise for getting the payment to Colby ASAP so we can continue using Colby software, right? Down here, Denise is saying, hey, I'd like to give CV3, pursue mastering growth to Tim for spending 15 hours writing the book yesterday. So why we follow that specific format by saying the core value number and then the core value name and then the substance of that core value is it really repeats over and over and over and over and over again for our teammates what our core values are. 
It is ethical uh, indoctrination. Let's just call it what it is, right? And that helps all of us become real quick at it. Why is that important? So that teammates can develop their ability to make independent decisions that are aligned with how the company makes decisions more and more quickly. There's this really great uh, diagram, not mine. So I wanna, again, make sure I'm giving credit where credit is due. This is called the helpfulness hierarchy. Uh, it is a guy named Daniel Debo who came up with this. Essentially, it says that the least helpful thing a person can do, it's still helpful, but the least helpful is to say, hey, there's a problem, right? A little more helpful is, hey, there's a problem, here's some causes. Even more helpful is, here's the problem, here's some possible causes, and here's some possible solutions. Even more helpful, level four is, here's the problem, here's what caused it, here's some solutions, and here's my recommendation. And level five is, here's a problem, I figured out what caused it, I researched the solution, and I fixed it just on keeping the loop. We can't possibly ask our teammates to operate at level three, four, five, unless we help them learn how to make decisions. How we help them make decisions, it's not the only way, but one of the most important ways is to define our core values. And once we have our core values, we can remind them of the core values. And we, we remind them of their core values every single week right here, and it becomes second nature. I also will remind of core values when someone comes to me with an issue, say, hey, Tim, here's a problem. You know, how do you think we could handle this? I'd say, well, let's put, let's bust out our core values. What would it mean for us to be accountable and transparent in the situation? What would it mean to show people we care to pursue mass and growth, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm literally downloading decision-making into my teammates and it's given me tremendous freedom because everyone knows how to make decisions, right? Okay, so once we've said core value moments and each person has said theirs, we have a quick touch on vacation or time off. So just reminding teammates, hey, I'm gonna be off the grid or I'm gonna be unavailable like 50%. Um, what we found to be really helpful is to say specifically what level of time off is it. When I go on my writing retreat, it is off grid. You will not hear from me. You will not hear from me. And it's important for teams to know that. In other cases, I might say like, hey, I'm going to be flying home to Canada, which is like a typically a six to eight hour effort every time I do it. And I'm going to have intermittent availability through the day. So it just helps us to adjust our expectations around availability. Okay, now this to-do list, uh, this to-do list is reviewing any to-dos that came out of last week's meeting. It might be all team members. It might be just a few team members. Um, I was playful in the last meeting. I assigned that everyone watch what I thought was the best Super Bowl ad. So that's just kind of like a funny thing. And you can see that people marked it done. Jen, Maria, Billy, Denise, everyone watched it. So they, they put their initials there. There was just one, uh, and then uh, Kyle had something to do. So where this one is for multiple people, this was just one person. So Kyle needed to coordinate updates to the welcome email, et cetera, et cetera. Great. And so by us bringing that from last week to this week, we can now check in. Hey, did it get done? Is someone stuck? They need help. What's the situation? So again, we're just reporting on that. Now, this is also something that my assistant, when she duplicates the document, she's going to take uh, next week items copy them, I should say cut them and paste them into past week, because as each week goes by, the next week becomes the past week, okay? Uh, and then if it wasn't already self-evident, teammates will put their own information into core value moments, their own information into vacation slash time off. Okay, so this is about 30 minutes. It's pretty regular. It's like 25, 30 minutes into the meeting, it takes us to this point right here. So the first 25 to 30 is all of this. I know it's a lot of pixels to look at, but we're smoking everything out within 25 to 30 minutes and we get into discussion, which now gives us the second half of the meeting, which is about 30 minutes with some time to conclude at the end. Now, before we dive into discussion, whoever's leading the meeting, so in this case, it's Jen who's leading the meeting. So what Jen would say is she would say, great, we're now, we've reached the discussion part of the meeting. Does anybody else have anything else they would like to add to the agenda? right? And it's kind of like a last call because we're setting the agenda now. And someone might say, you know what, come to think of it, I'd like to talk about client ABC or whatever. Okay. So people have an opportunity, one last chance to put items in. We don't start discussion discussing just yet. Jen will then say, great. Any items that have not been rated yet, please go ahead and score the importance and the urgency. Because sometimes something feels very urgent, but it's actually not very important. And other times something's very important, but not very urgent. So what I developed was a scoring method where you actually multiply 
importance by urgency to get a, a, a priority score. So something that is nine important and nine urgent, nine times nine is 81. Wow, okay, we better tackle that before something that's only 25 points. So remember towards the start of this training, how I talked about, we wanna avoid spending the whole meeting talking about something that's the 17th most important item. This is how we determine what is number one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, uh, another tip of the cap to Gino Wickman and his book, Traction. Uh, if, if you haven't read it, I recommend that you do. Um, is he talks about, we want to uh, complete agenda items. We don't want to spend like, I, I, you know, we don't want to get this to nine out of 10 complete and then go over to here because that means we would just end the meeting with nothing actually decided or finalized. We want to take the most important item at the top. We want to get it through to completion 100%. And if that means that we don't get to the second item, we don't get to the second item. Just means the second item we might have to handle another way. Maybe it's through our team chat, through something like Shanti. Maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Who knows? But we got to complete items through to completion so that it actually, we get value out of this part. Now, five minutes before the end of the meeting, you know, our team has had hundreds of meetings over the years of, of this format. Um, I think it's in, if I'm remembering correctly, of hundreds of meeting meetings, we've actually gone over time, I think only three times ever. And when we went over, it was like a minute and a half or two minutes. So we have an incredible value around finishing actually early, believe it or not. So once we hit the 55, the 50, three, 54, 55 minute mark, we'll gently say, hey, it's time to wrap up this meeting. Um, and, uh, and, and on the count of three, everyone hold up your hands to the camera with your score, zero, to, zero being bad, 10 being good, zero to 10, your score for today's meeting. And we do it all simultaneously. So there's no one like, oh, well, what is the boss saying? Like, no, 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 right? It's, it's all at the same time. And everyone puts up their score to the screen. There's no fractional scoring. Like there, there's no like, I'm a nine and a half. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's, it's sing, a full, full numbers only. And then from there, if anyone has rated anything less than a 10, then we just gently ask, hey, you know, Tom, I'm seeing that you rated today's uh, meeting a nine. I'm curious, what was missing such that if present would take it to a 10? And this is where we start to get better and better and better because we get all these little ideas. And I, the range of things I've heard on how to improve meetings, I could not have made this up. Like I thought there'd be like three or four things like, oh, it was too slow or it was boring or something. No, no, no. I've had people rate it nine because like, oh, not everyone was here and it would have been really nice to see everyone. I'm like, oh, that's actually a really good point, right? Or, oh, I felt we got caught in the weeds here or I didn't agree with this or that's you know, perfect. Let's hear it all. Let's hear it all. And then, you know, ties in our way 1% better, 1% better, 1% better to getting our ideal meeting format. Okay. So that is how we do our weekly meeting. Dr. Tom, I wanted to ask you to unmute yourself and see uh, what are your comments, questions, or objections about what you're seeing here? Yeah. No, um, as someone who's um, used the EOS system before and done level 10 meetings, I actually think that um, one of the things I really did not like about that model and I do like about your model is the ability to go back to see what happened before. Because sometimes I, I, I was like, well, we kind of, you know, you lose a lot of that historical value and you can learn a lot and sometimes you just misplace something. And I think the screen you're on right now, um, you know, being someone who we were pretty kind of following, you know, the time frame um, pretty well, but the importance and urgency, I think are really critical for a couple of reasons. One is so that when, cause usually we would just have the person running the meeting, organize it the way traction recommends it. And in this, it's like, well, if we agree on the numbers and then we multiply and then we really know, because it what reminds me of this is like, what is it? Quadrant one and two or whatever from Covey. Yes. But it's like, it's like, the thing is we're so used to doing the important urgent stuff, but then we kind of miss out on sort of important without the urgency. So we want to put out those fires. But I think if you had more here, you would see like there might be a nine with a six urgency. And that's going to be really important to that's maybe my rock for the quarter or the, the yearly goal. So it would, to, in my brain, it really let me see a way where I could kind of incorporate multiple different ways of thinking. So I'm 
I'm not just going, hey, this meeting is about fires. This meeting is about non-urgent, important things as well. And I can visually see that. And I might need to call an audible to switch one versus the other so that I can make sure that we're making long-term progress as well as doing what we need to do this week. And I think that goes back. Um, I really, I didn't even know that on these um, Google sheets, you could put in those buttons. And I like it all in the one place like that. I find like we've done it in Asana before, which is really helpful, but it's not as visually kind of like, you know, streamlined as this. So um, I think I'm ta there's a lot of things. Um, I love the method. I just found that we got bogged down in it at times. And, you know, um, I think that also not being 90 minutes, but being 60 minutes is way more, as you know, <laughs> the, the amount of attention span I have for getting it done. Cause I'd rather, if you need something more, let's schedule that other meeting. So I think it looks really great. And I, and I just, like I said, the, the tweaks in there are, are actually for someone who's very visual and also wants to have other people be able to go back if they missed a meeting or whatever. I think it's it really helpful. Nice. Yeah. I, I'm hearing that, you know, you're, you're able, especially because of the rating system, you're able to really make sure that important but not urgent items still can get some progress rather than just the squeakiest wheel in the business getting the attention. Yeah, and actually, I mean, and I don't know how I'll deploy it this way, but I can almost imagine that unless it's an 81 or a hundred, you know, you might have a nine and a six, like I said, which is clearly not 81, but the, but the non-urgent could actually become more urgent than the urgent thing. Like I could come up because I find that the place as an entrepreneur that I probably I'm great at putting out fires. I should be like the world's greatest firefighter. Right. But the thing that moves our businesses forward is the, is gaining that traction, gaining that momentum on things that are not urgent. And I've not seen it. I've seen the quadrants and I've done quadrant exercises to hold myself accountable, but seeing it here for everybody to be able to teach them, Hey, we got to, Clearly there's a fire, let's work on it, but also let's work on that other aspect of momentum and that positive inertia. I think that that's a, it's a visual tool for me and other people on my team, but I also think it's a great teaching tool. Like, and the other part too, I don't want to forget about, and, and I think one of the reasons we were sitting down to go over this is not just to come up with a, a better way to do a team meeting, but I really like the core value moments and having gone over my core values with my team after you and I revised them and made them more succinct, you know, giving people kudos, which we've always done, but doing it based on your company's core values, like you said, is that, that training, that indoctrination that's done ethically and morally. And everybody on my team loves our core values. That's why they work for us. So what better way to reward them and to remind them and to onboard new people than say, hey, you are like, cause I think a lot of people sometimes feel like they're working for the paycheck, bringing them in and going, oh my God, I am a valuable member of this team. I'm uplifting the team. And it's not just because Dr. Tom said those words I just said, but your whole team living and breathing these, I think is a piece of culture that often gets overlooked. And when people ask, why don't I have culture? This might be one of the ways to fix that. Love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, I, I know our time is a little limited here, so I'll just touch on one other thing from a teaching perspective is if a person, you know, including possibly you, Dr. Tom, although I know you, you'll probably deploy all this really quickly because that's just you, uh, high, high performance kind of guy. Um, if anybody watching this feels like, oh my God, this is a lot, like this is overwhelming, then what I'd recommend if you don't have core values defined yet, just take the section out for now, you know? We can get to that in a week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. You know, Dr. Tom and I spent four sessions. You know, we we spent probably four one-hour sessions each, you know, uh, back to back over the course of four weeks. Like it took us a month to go through that. So you know, Dr. Tom really worked hard to earn his core values in such a tight, succinct, and complete kind of way. And and if you, the listener, are, are just not quite there yet, hey, don't beat yourself up. Just take this part out for now. We'll always add it later, right? What you're looking at is the product of literally years, like hundreds of reps. And, you know, it's like if we've got the base model car, but then we start adding rims and, you know, cool tint to the window, like this is the fully tricked out version of the car, let's say. Um, 
essential, essential. If I were to strip this down and say like, what is the very, like where's the absolute beginning part? I think that this discussion part is essential to have a good team meeting. I think that this importance and urgency is really important as well to Dr. Tom's point. So we can move out of just firefighting all the time. So I would definitely keep this in our meeting. And I think the uh, the good news at the start, that's like a nice way, especially your team is virtual and it's very easy to deploy. I think that's really, really good. So really what it comes down to is how do we simplify the reporting section in the middle? You might not have a dashboard, no problem. No problem, that'll come in the near future. What I would say though, is if we have on-ramp, let's say we have reporting and inside of reporting, pretty much every business I know has goals. So whatever your goals are, even if they're not assigned to people, even if it's not pretty like this, it's whatever our goals are for the quarter, right? I would review those to see if there's any kind of like uh, issues that come out of that. Uh, I would also include the um, uh, headlines. That's very easy to deploy. That's also a really good momentum element to help teammates see, wow, things are really happening. This is very, very exciting. Doesn't require you to build anything. There's no core values to define. There's no scoreboard to create. Very, very simple to deploy. And then I would also say that the, uh, the to-do list is also very easy to deploy as well for just taking note from last meeting, hey, what got done, what didn't get done, right? And then out of this meeting, what do we wanna do between now and the next week? So I think those items are an excellent starting point that will help us start smoking out where some of our challenges or let's say issues to discuss are. And that helps to populate our discussion item right here. Then you do the scoring part. And then of course, we wanna rate the meeting at the end so we can constantly get better and better. That's a much simpler version of this exact same format. It's in the tradition of this format, and it creates kind of the base model that you can then start building upon as time goes on. Any closing comments, uh, Dr. Tom? Um, the one thing that I just thought of, um, other than the previous comments, is we do a modified version of this for our family. Both ah. My wife, my daughter, and I together, and then my wife and I together. And a lot of people have told me that they haven't thought of using it that way, but the part that really struck me is when we look at things like the headlines so that we know what happened last week and what's, and then the, the to do's or the vacation time off piece is like, what's coming up. And my daughter has a big trip planned for with school for Europe. And you know how it just, everything becomes really last minute. Our life has become not last minute by doing this. And wow. so it's really taken a lot of stress off her plate. And our daughter just turned 14. She feels so empowered by doing this. So I see it work, you know, in our family, a modified version. And I know the more a super complex version can work in your business. And I think to your point, the most important thing is pick the things you have and do them. And, and you know, and just a little by little, maybe get more complex. But every time we've done this in any version, it's better than we don't do it. And everybody involved feels really empowered. And <laughs> It's kind of hard sometimes to empower a 14 year old. So, I mean, you know, and, and really we're all just big 13, 14 year olds anyway, right? So I, I find it's, I love the way you have it organized. I just, you know, but I, again, it's like, I think doing a part of it is better than doing none of it. And I've seen it work, even if you'd modify what, what you've been teaching, Tim, I, I've seen a lot of different variations work. So I think people can feel free to do what they can do now and then build to where you've gotten it. Um, and having done the full system with, with the, when our team was larger and we decided to simplify, it can get really complicated, but if you follow the structure you have and you add in those it, parts of decision-making that you added in there, I think it's a, it's a well-oiled machine as long as you kind of just follow the process that you've outlined. So thank My you for sharing. Yeah, you bet. My, my final comment on my end is I think this can look like it's a lot of work. It's like, oh my God, I got to copy and paste this document and update things on and on. Okay. And, and that can create a sense of friction and like, I don't even want to do this. Okay. This is, this is a, uh, to use the Dean Jackson, Dan Sullivan, who not how statement. Okay. So all of this runs in my business and I, I, sh I open this document like maybe 10 minutes before each weekly meeting, I input my stuff and I'm good to go. 
I don't do any of the copying. I don't do any of the updating aside from inputting a couple items for me. I'm not the one who goes to the master list. I'm not the one who creates this, links it, none of it. This is a perfect moment where we want an executive assistant to help us to run the background administration of things so we can be the surgeon in the room, not the nurse, not the janitor, not the finance person. No, no, no. We just show up maybe a few minutes early, update the doc, do the meeting, and then exit. Perfect example of surgeon in the room. Good. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Tom. And thank you for generously uh, being in this training session for everyone else who's going to watch this down the road. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge all entrepreneurs watching this that, you know, entrepreneurship is not easy. It's challenging, but we do have each other to support with great ideas, inspiration, community, coaching, all of it. So let's stick together and uh, continue on that thrilling pursuit of excellence.